Hello, good people that subscribe to the uh, Dr. Zero Trust Patreon. Uh, I'm working on making sure that I get, uh, let's call it breaking news and more uh, specific content to you folks because you're kind enough to donate to my charities here. So this is a first of, uh, this is the most recent analysis on the CrowdStrike NPM supply chain attack. I'll make the uh, document and all the links available to you. Uh, but I think that this is very critical to get out there so that we understand what's going on. And CrowdStrike, again, has kind of put itself into a position of oopsies. So let's run through this. On September 15th, 2025, a sophisticated supply chain attack targeting the NPM, which is the Node Package Manager ecosystem, premised about 20 CrowdStrike packages among 200 total affected packages. This incident, which was dubbed Shai Halud, which if you're not a Dune fan, which I am, you know that Dune, uh, Shai Halud is the, the mythical worm, um, represents a significant evolution in supply chain threats, featuring the first propagating worm to spread through the NPM ecosystem. Unlike traditional attacks, the malware automatically infects downstream packages, creating a cascading compromise across the software development. So this is not good. Here's a timeline of the events, and I've got all the resources and citations, and everything in here, so I'll share those as well. September 14th, the first malicious package, which was September 14th, 2025, the first malicious package, which was RXNT-Authentication, was updated and published. Optic Wolf showed this one. Um, September 15th, and all this is going on during CrowdStrike's conference, by the way. Uh, Daniel Pereira, who's out there, a very cool dude, a developer, just dis discovered suspicious repository creation and became the first to identify that at control slash tiny color had been infected. Um, during the day, researchers at Socket, Aikido, and other firms began tracking the expanding attack. Uh, and no, overall, during September 15th, about 40 packages were identified as compromised based on sonotype reporting. And by the end of the day, over 187 were compromised. And this is from Reddit, which is where the truth really lies. September 16th, 7 o'clock in the evening, 180 compromised package officially trafficked by security firms or tracked by security firms, rather. And then ongoing, CrowdStrike and NPM began removing these malicious packages. This is where outages started happening and those types of things. And then the attack progression slowed because of the rapid response efforts of CrowdStrike and others. So kudos to them for responding quickly, although it definitely didn't hurt that they were on stage literally briefing about their solution. So, yeah. What makes this attack unique? It's a self-propagating worm capability. Unlike previous NPM attacks, Shai Halud operates as an actual worm with self-replication capabilities. So it crawls, you could say. Automatic propagation mechanism as it goes downstream, uh, does credential harvesting, package enumeration, and then cascading compromise. So it crawls across infrastructure, looks for those types of things, and goes forward from there. Um, the worm executes during the the post-install phase of the compromised package through a massive bundle.js script. Uh, there's a breakdown in the link there from an operational workflow. Uh, looks for GitHub NPM packages and GCP credentials, and then it verifies uh, the creds there with Truffle Hog, which is a secret scanner that's out there. It's pretty easy to find. Data Xfil takes things and sends them outbound, and then repository manipulation creates public Shai Halud repositories. So if you see Shai Halud showing up in your repos, you have an issue. Uh, and then lastly, a self-propagation modifies other packages so that it can continue downstream. And I have a thing I need to fix there. So uh, packages affected, here's a list. Uh, more than 20 CrowdStrike NPM packages published under the CrowdStrike Publisher NPM account were compromised. The specific packages included various development tools and libraries. And there's a list of them right there. You can go on Reddit and get those. There's the link for you. CrowdStrike's official response, and again, this was while they were on stage doing their stuff, which is probably very scary for them. Uh, after detecting several malicious NPM packages in the public NPM registry, a third party open source repository, we swiftly removed them and provided uh, and proactively rotated our keys in public registries. I would ask why that wasn't happening before, but that's a different story. These packages are not used in the Falcon sensor. The platform is not impacted and customers remain protected. Start the clock. We are working with NPM and conducting a thorough investigation. So key points from the response, swift action, cool security measures, me measures that they've talked about, proactive registration of keys. Mm. Falcon sensor remains unaffected. I always say start the clock. Anytime somebody says data hasn't been touched or whatever else, start the clock. And of course, no impact on customer security. Mm. Don't see how that's possible here. That's a pretty early instance of uh, being ahead of it and saying that without really having veracity that that's true. Attack methodology, uh, the Shai Halud worm demonstrates sophisticated capabilities, downloads and runs Truffle Hog, searches host scanners for tokens and cloud credentials, validates developer and CI creds, creates unauthorized GitHub actions, exfiltrates data to external URLs, propagates and amplifies the attack. Scale of compromise in total, 
This is what I could find from all re my research. 580 plus compromised package versions, 47 packages are still available, which is not cool. 700 plus private repositories are made public and uh, multiple major organizations. So uh, this is where I say, I don't understand how CrowdStrike can say no customers were affected with a supply chain attack that is being responded to in real time when there are already customers that are saying that that's showing up. Attack vector analysis. The initial compromise remains unclear, but security researchers noted it did not appear to be from a traditional phishing campaign. So that also means how did they get that in there? There's other issues, maybe insider threat, maybe uh, software stuff or whatever else, but bigger problems potentially. This differs from previous NPM attacks like the September 8th attack that we all know and love uh, that use phishing emails from fake domains like npmjs.help. Uh, context and broader implications. So the attack follows a concerning pattern of NPM ecosystem compromise in 2025. So far this year, there's been chalk debug and other packages. I guess there was packages, NX was compromised as well, and then multiple incidents of JavaScript, which we all kind of know about. Uh, expert analysis from Step Security and Cybel. Uh, this attack demonstrates a concerning evolution in supply chain threats. The malware includes a self-propagating mechanism that automatically infects downstream packages, which is not good. Cybel called it a, quote, significant escalation supply chain attack sophistication and targeting precision with, quote, potential state-sponsored or APT threat group involvement. I would say that that's probably very realistic here just based on the type of attack and the proliferation and those types of things and the fact that CrowdStrike is a giant mega target for APTs. Detection methods. How can you detect this thing? Runtime monitoring, looking for suspicious JavaScript, uh, webhook.site communications, um, repository monitoring. If you see Shy Halud, like I said earlier, problem. And credential scanning. If you see Truffle Hog showing up, Truffle Hog shouldn't be there probably. Mitigation strategies. Um, audit everything, package removal, cleaning that up, credential rotation, please rotate your credentials now, enhanced security, scanning, multi-factor credential vaulting, which is all stuff that we should basically have, which again, this makes me go back to if CrowdStrike is a security company, why aren't these part of the practices within their development ecosystem? Monitoring improvements, SBOM, CICD, GitHub workflow, which you should have anyway. Lessons learned, um, zero trust is a thing, trust model vulnerabilities, credential management, automated propagation. Um, industry response so far, these things can take place, but they should be part of it, in my opinion, already. Trusted publishers, approval processes, enhanced monitoring. And so this is a comparison to the July 2024 CrowdStrike outage that I put together that basically bricked the internet and caused $10 billion of damage. But let's talk about this real quick. So the July outage of 2024 was an internal software defect, bad code in the Falcon sensor update that bricked everything. And yes, I use Wikipedia for the citations here because I was a little bit lazy, but in this case, this is a long tail thing. Wikipedia is relatively accurate. Eight and a half million Windows systems were affected. Google infrastructure was impacted. Delta Airlines is still suing CrowdStrike. And then roughly $10 billion was the estimated damages. Ouch, sucks a lot. External supply chain attack. This is the current one that's going on right now um, is basically what they're looking at. I would again suggest it's probably APT related. I don't have any data to tell that, but my spidey sense tells me that's what's up. No impact on the CrowdStrike core Falcon platform. I again would question that. I think it's way too early to say that, but um, okay. Development ecosystem focus, NPM packages and developer creds. Yes, again, those should be rotating on their own. Like, so there's obviously some mismanagement or something in there. And it's a self-propagating attack, but it's self-propagating in that it's basically doing the things that you would expect a worm to do. And this is, worms have been around for quite a long time. So I wouldn't say that this is new stuff either. Um, takeaways. So evolution of threats. Um, this represents the first actual worm specific to an NPM ecosystem. And this is probably happening because people are able to build these types of malicious things using these AI ML systems and make them more uh, malicious. CrowdStrike's position, despite being a victim, which they are, CrowdStrike's rapid response and transparent communication demonstrate improved crisis management since they got their ass handed to them in July of 2024. Yes, but I would still suggest that they're way over the tips of their skis on saying no impact, no customers, all those things. Um, the effect, uh, the attack affects the broader software development ecosystem, which supply chain is a big issue. Technical sophistication, significant advancement in supply chain attack techniques. Yeah, but it's more of a targeted use of older techniques that have been optimized for this particular outcome. So not totally newish. And uh, response, quick detection and coordinated response limited the attack's ultimate impact. So again, they did their stuff during that. And I think it's probably fair for CrowdStrike to say that they've covered CrowdStrike spaces, but 
for a software development lifecycle chain NPM system type thing, I would still suggest it's way, way early to get out there and say no one was affected because you couldn't possibly know that yet. So anyway, that's my two cents. Um, I'll make this link available to all you fine people. This will go up on the Patreon site for a few days before I release it on the other channels. Um, but hopefully you don't have any of these issues to deal with and uh, stay smart, stay safe, stay secure and uh, be aware.